Hello everyone, Terry Solomon here for GoTreasureHunting.com and today I'm going to talk to you about digging tools which metal detectors need to put some thought into. Um, the digging tools that we use, are, we use for a reason. Uh, let's look at the different types of soils uh, that are very common uh, here in the United States to metal detectors. Clay soil is, uh, we've all dug in clay, it's heavy, um, hard to get through. Um, very uh, tough on shovels and digging tools. Um, sandy soil, um, again, you know, very easy to dig through sandy soil, but things drop a lot further, go a lot deeper. Silt soils. Silt soils are very similar to sandy soils. Uh, we find these silt soils on top of um, bedrock, on top of uh, large areas in the south, uh, in the southwest. Um, silt soil is, um, you know, very typical in farm fields and so forth. Um, desert soils uh, are very typical to us out in Arizona, uh, New Mexico, California, uh, some of the uh, western states, even the Dakotas. Um, um, again, you know, these are uh, sandy, light soils over uh, hard rock mixed in with, uh, you know, different uh, types of stone and so forth and can be very, very uh, hard on our equipment. Loam soil, um, probably the perfect type of soil that we find here uh, on the East Coast. Um, very easy to get through, um, very easy to dig through. So um, these are some of the, the types of soils that are are very basic here in the United States. Um, let's move on to uh, the um, types of digging tools that we use and why we use those types. Um, for instance, uh, in New York City, when you get a New York City permit for their different parks and so forth, in many places you're limited to the size of the digging tool that you can use. Um, for instance, in uh, Prospect Park, uh, you can't use a digging tool legitimately that's longer than 12 inches or more than 4 inches wide. So there's no shovels allowed in Prospect Park. Um, however, uh, I, let's face it, we've seen a lot of people in Prospect Park with actual metal detecting uh, shovels. Um, and we'll get into the reason why they're not hassled for that. Uh, we'll get into that as we move on. But you want to remember that you don't want to go into a public park and take a long-handled regular digging shovel with you because you're immediately going to be perceived as someone who's destroying the park, who's digging up the park, who's leaving holes. Uh, you know, people can break their ankles or pets can get hurt. You know, there, there's a myriad of excuses and reasons why people don't want to see you digging with a big shovel in a park. And you don't want to draw that kind of attention to yourself or uh, look, ha be looked down upon or have people look negatively at the, uh, at the hobby. So there's a reason that we use hand diggers in parks uh, and not shovels. Um, so why, are, why do we use the shovels and hand diggers that we use? Well, uh, the reason for that are A, the different types of soils that we're digging in the different locations that we're digging in. If we're digging in a farm field, a shovel is appropriate, but not in a park, not in a city park. Um, if we're digging out in the woods, a uh, shovel is appropriate, but the right type of shovel. You want a shovel that's gonna cut through uh, roots and rooty soil. You want a shovel that's going to, if you're in clay areas, that's gonna cut through that clay. You want a hand digger that's gonna cut through that clay. What if you're in rocky soil? What if you're down near a creek and it's all rocky? You want a shovel that's gonna be heavy duty enough to get into those rocks and move them, possibly even use um, to leverage some of those rocks out of place. So you need to know what your tool's uh, limits are. All right, so let's get into a, a couple of the things that um, I use uh, and the reasons that uh, I use them. The classic is the Lesh digging knife. I believe it's model 49, I can't remember now. But the Lesh runs about 40 bucks it will last you forever. I've had a Lesh that I've had now for 
15 years. And I've had it resharpened three times. Um, so, you know, it's worn down a bit. It's not as long as it used to be, but man, it still works like a charm. Um, a lash is about 12 inches in overall lengths. It comes with a sheath. It can be used anywhere. It cuts through roots very well. Um, you'll see the serrations on the side. You want to make sure you get a left-handed or right-handed digger. They come in both. Uh, another digging tool that I really enjoy, uh, a hand digger, is called the Detechnics. Um, the Detechnics digger is um, a little less money than the um, Lesh. However, I believe it is just as good. Um, uh, it uh, is about the same dimension. It's just a touch wider than the Lesh. And I like the handle much better. Uh, it's more of a uh, kind of a bubble. It's just it's just a much better uh, uh, handle. Another uh, hand digger um, is the Grave Digger Tools Sidekick Digger. Man, this thing is incredible in rocky soil, in roots. It will tear through anything. It is. Uh, It'll, you could use this thing as a pry bar. You can stand on this thing. It, it, it's that uh, well built. It is not going to bend. Uh, it's just not going to bend. So uh, that's the Grave Digger Tools Sidekick Hand Digger. Um, let's talk a little bit about Predator. Predator Tools uh, has an amazing digger. Um, this tool is great in clay soils, uh, loamy soils. Uh, it will cut into the uh, clay soils. You can uh, uh, you can dig a um, perfect uh, cut with it. It's it's easy to handle. It's um, I can't praise it enough. Uh, look up your Predator tools. This one is called the uh, Raptor. It's model number thirty one uh, Predator. Um, Model 31 Raptor, great tool. All right, so um, that's the uh, the Lesh uh, digging knife, the uh, Detechnics Diamond Digger, um, the Grave Digger Tools Sidekick, and the Predator Tools Raptor. Um, those are some of the hand tools that I use and that I uh, definitely recommend. All right, let's take a look at shovels. All right, the first shovel I want to talk to you about is the classic. It's the Lesh Samson digging shovel. Comes in at about $60. Um, and this is the shovel that uh, I highly recommend for anyone who's just beginning in the hobby. Um, it's available with a T handle or a ball handle. It's about 31 inches overall. Uh, it has a seven and a half inch long, four inch wide blade. Um, and it comes in uh, three versions, non-serrated, uh, single serrated on one side, and dual serrated on both sides. Um, again, this is a classic uh, digging shovel. It's light uh, as compared to other digging shovels. Um, now, because it is lighter, um, it does have a tendency to bend. If you try to use it as... A pry bar. Um, this is not a pry bar. It's a digging shovel, so uh, it's it's not as strong at the um, where the shovel head uh, connects to the uh, handle as some of the other shovels uh, out there. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's it's not to be used as a pry bar. It's simply a digging shovel. Um, the next one I want to talk to you about is the Lesh Super Samson. Now, this is a, a, a larger version of the, um, uh, the Lesh. It's uh, got a D handle. Its overall length is about 40 inches. It weighs 5.4 pounds, so it's not light. The blade dimensions are 13 and a half inches long by 8 inches wide. Um, it has a five-year warranty. It's made in the USA. 
Um, and this is a shovel that's made for deep field digging, um, farm fields, um, deep woods, um, construction sites. I mean, th this, this is a deep shovel that's heavy. And you use this shovel, not a, obviously not in city parks, but when you're looking for artifacts, uh, Civil War artifacts, when you're when you're dig when you're going deep, you don't use this shovel if you've got a um, um, Garrett Ace 250 because your machine's not going to go deep enough to utilize this shovel. So keep that in mind. Um, Predator Tools has uh, a number of different types of shovels. You want to check these out. The Piranha. Um, they have different nose shapes, different uh, serrations. We, you've got to figure out what kind of soil you're going to be hunting in. Are you, is your soil very rooty? Um, you know, you may need something like the um, the Yorktown. Um, which will cut through those roots and, and just, uh, you know, go into that loamy soil below. You know, this may not work in rocks, however. So, you know, you've got to decide on the type of tool that you need for the soils that you need. Um, I want to go into uh, some tools by gravediggertools.com. Uh, uh, and Eric Wallace, uh, I've used some of his uh, tools, and, and uh, there is no comparison between Gravedigger, Samson, uh, Predator, Lesh. Gravedigger tools will beat any of those shovels as far as build, um, toughness, um, I don't, they're just, they're heavy. So most of these grave digger tools are, they are heavy, but they're built to be heavy. They're built to be used as pry bars. If you need to use them as pry bars, there needs, these are shovels that are meant to be used, not so much in city parks, but in the field, in the woods, uh, digging for artifacts, um, uh, digging for um, Civil War items, uh, digging in farm fields for coins and jewelry. These are heavy-duty shovels that will last you a lifetime. These are, these are shovels that will be handed down to someone who likes to metal detect in your family long after you're gone. They're that tough. Uh, they just can't be destroyed. Um, I use the uh, Gravedigger Nemesis, however, I'm about to order the Tombstone, which is the longest blade. It's 10 inches long, it's 5 inches wide, um, and the overall length is about 45 inches, I'd say, um, and it probably weighs close to 6 pounds. So, but this is the shovel that I need here in New York for the type of digging that I do. Uh, the Nemesis was a great shovel, but I gave it away. I, I gave it to a veteran um, who I helped to get started uh, in the metal detecting uh, hobby. And this guy loves it. Here's a picture of the one that I gave to the veteran, a black uh, grave digger Nemesis. Um, loved that shovel. So I'm gonna get uh, the tombstone next. You can see the welds um, on this shovel uh, that's done by Mr. Wallace, who, uh, before he started this country, was a master, our company was a master welder for some time, uh, doing large machinery and so forth. Actually broke a shovel while digging in his backyard metal detecting and decided he could do a better job. Uh, so in 2014, he went into business. And... Um, you got to check out the gravediggertools.com shovels. Um, I, I just can't say enough about them. If you're a small person, if you're a woman um, that is small in stature, a man that's small in stature, you may want to go with the Lesh or the Predator shovels 
because they weigh less. Uh, they're good quality shovels. I'm not saying they're not. Uh, but for me, these gravedigger shovels are just the uh, Mac Daddy. All right? So just to um, go back through, there are many shovel types. There are many shovel designs and heads, serrations, non-serrations. You have to think about your soil. You have to think about, uh, do you have a lot of rocks in your soil? Are you going to be digging in rocky areas? Or are you just going to be digging in sandy or loamy soil? Um, how big are you? How big a shovel do you want to carry around? Uh, is it going to make a difference between six pounds and three pounds? Um, these are all considerations you need to make before buying your tool. Um, yeah, you can go to Home Depot and you can buy a shovel or a digging tool, but you're going to be back at Home Depot in a few months buying another shovel and another digging tool. Buy once. Spend once. Spend your money smartly. When you go cheap, you end up paying just as much as you would have if you had bought the right tool the first time. Keep that in mind. Go check out FortBedfordMetalDetectors.com. Uh, Keith Leppard is my sponsor. I really appreciate you guys uh, checking him out and uh, checking out the deals he has on these digging tools. Uh, call him up. If you don't see the digging tool you want, call him up. Ask him if you can order it through him. If you found this video helpful in any way, please hit the like button. And uh, if you'd like to see more and help me out uh, to spread the word about the right uh, way to go about our hobby, please hit the subscribe button. This is Terry Solomon for GoTreasureHunting.com. Thank you for watching.